you. Happy Saturday in the fall. It's nice in the fall in New York. I was talking to my buddy. I asked him what he likes to do in the fall in New York. He told me every day he goes to the park and he likes to people watch. Why is that okay? <laughs> people watch. Just because we flip the words around, it's not creepy anymore. <laughs> you know? I, I just feel like it's a lot different if he's like, yeah, every day I go to the park, watch people. <laughs> but we just flip the words, and now it's like this cultured past. He's like, yeah, I go to the park and people watch. Sometimes I people follow. <laughs> I really like them while people touch, you know? <laughs> people pinch, people squeeze. They don't let me go to that park anymore. More just, I mean, I, I off jerk one time. And I <laughs> it makes me so mad I want to people kill, really. It's frustrating. But I'm not knocking it, you know, I, 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 I'm joking. I, I people watch too, sometimes. I'm, I don't. I don't know that I'm good the way I do it, because when I people watch, I just sit on a bench and I go, look at this fucking asshole. <laughs> Everybody I see, I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I people judge. That's the big thing. That's really what we're doing. I don't know what that is. Every stranger I see, I just, I hate a little bit. <laughs> Every stranger, I'm just like, fuck you, kind of. And I think it's because you can only care about who you care about. You only care about who you know, and everybody else is sort of like a thinly veiled threat <laughs> in a way. So you're like, fuck you. You're not on the team. <laughs> and I have a buddy who uh, he tells me he has social anxiety, my buddy Chet. And I'm like, Chet, what do you mean by that, man? And he's like, well, I'll go to a party and I don't know anybody there and I feel like everybody hates me. And I had to tell him, I was like, Chet, my man, they do. <laughs> they absolutely do. I know you're my friend, but you got a stupid fucking mustache, guy. And if I saw you, I'd hate you, but I know you and you're on my, and I care about you now. That's all, you just gotta introduce yourself. You just gotta, you just gotta get out there and introduce yourself. A guy came up to me after a show last night. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm Caleb, nice to meet you. I thought you did really well tonight. And I was like, oh. Okay, well, I'll die for you. What? <laughs> Come up, you introduce yourself, you give me a compliment. This is cut and dry stuff. That's great stuff. <laughs> That's how you make friends. Hi, I'm Mike. Hi, I'm Claire. Claire, I, I like your Patagonia. Thanks. You're welcome. And I like your son. Yes, thank you very much. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you build a bridge. <laughs> so you make a new friend. Thank you so much, Claire. <laughs> My cousin's name is Claire. Look at that, we're relating. <laughs> <laughs> Rhode Island. I like Rhode Island. I've been there. I've been there once or twice. Went to Providence. Ate at the diner every day. The ladies there were really nice. Um, I have a picture with them, and I look at it sometimes, and I go. <laughs> it's good times. I'm from uh, I'm from Georgia myself. I grew up in Atlanta. Um, my family's very southern. Like my dad, especially, is like a caricature of a southern dude. He's a goofball. Like, my dad's so Southern, he believes in God and aliens. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's not mutually exclusive to him. He's just, he's scared of the sky. And I can't blame him. The sky's a scary place. We were growing up, we were raised like in the suburbs of Atlanta, but my dad was raised super poor in the South. So when we were growing up, he was obsessed with doing stuff he did as a kid to make himself feel better. Like, he did stuff with us where it was like, we didn't, have to do this <laughs> to justify his own upbringing. Like every morning we had to eat fried bologna for breakfast. You know, and I'm not, not like, I genuinely love bologna. It's part of me now, <laughs> right? But it's like, we grew up on a cul-de-sac. You wanted a dirt road, motherfucker. Like, come on, this isn't a bologna house. <laughs> And like I said, I love bologna now, but there's a reason I'm not two inches taller. You know what I mean? <laughs> I could have had real nutrition as a boy. <laughs> I remember when I, was, when I was 13, for Christmas, my dad gave me a slinky. He gave me a slinky, because that's what he got for Christmas when he was 13. And I remember holding it and looking at him like, hey, buddy, I don't want to be ungrateful, but what the fuck? <laughs> and my dad was like, oh, okay, that's a bad gift. That's a bad gift. You take it to the top of the stairs, give it a push. You tell me that's a bad gift. Okay. <laughs> I 
think you take it to the top of the stairs, you're going to see that thing really shines for you, brother. <laughs> Let it work. Let it put that show on for you. Take it. <laughs> top of the stairs. You tell me that back again. <laughs> He's really worried I was gay when I was younger. Big fear. He's worried I was gay. I don't know, I like song and dance. I like to dance. I like to let my co big cousins dress me up like a girl. That's classic stuff. <laughs> that's classic funny stuff. Everybody knows that's funny. And my dad would just be like, oh, and then his brother, my Uncle Joe, would be like, John, you better watch your boy. <laughs> better watch your boy, John. He's locking that lipstick a little too much, man. <laughs> When I was seven years old, I asked for a Ken doll for my birthday. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I thought like G.I. Joe was played out and not original and I was like, I'm gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a Ken doll. So I remember I asked for a Ken doll for my birthday and my dad was like, what, what, what the fuck? And my mom was this really sweet supportive lady. She was like, John, you shut the fuck up, John, and you get him that doll. You get my baby that doll. And so on my birthday, I opened the present and what my dad got me was a spandex wearing rollerblading Ken. <laughs> Which I feel is a pretty heavy pull. And I just think that's interesting because I like to think my dad was sort of, like, he was like at the Toys R Us and he sort of rounded a corner in his mind and of all the Kens he saw, he goes, you know what? If we're going to be gay, we're going all the way. Spandex and rollerblades. I'm going to have the best gay boy there is. <laughs> And I remember I opened that present and the first thing I did was cut the spandex to make it tighter and slimmer to Ken's body. And my mom just stared at my dad like, and my dad just had to be like, love what you're doing with the spandex champ. Love how you got creative on your own and somehow made this more gay. Love what you did. That's a big Trump guy, my dad. In a Trump, I'm gonna be honest, at least, you know, it's nice to see him excited about something. <laughs> Trump comes on and the light comes into his eyes, like, ah! <laughs> You know? I'm voting for Kamala, baby. I, we don't talk about how hot that woman is. <laughs> Nobody's talking about how fucking hot she is. I would. I'd, I'll just say it. <laughs> I'd just say I'd kiss her on the lips, dude. <laughs> Real shit, I'd smooch her right, right there. A little tongue if she wants to. I don't know. <laughs> That's a president. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, she does have an interesting vibe, though. Kamala Harris seems like that lady that would wear her Invisalign to work. <laughs> and you got to act like you don't see it, but you're like, it, it is visible. Uh, <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Thank you very much. <laughs>